What's going on guys, Random G Games, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to put custom dimensions in your worlds, and how to make them. So without further ado, let's close Minecraft, and I'll see you guys on my desktop. Alright, now that we're on my desktop, you can see I already have a data pack here actually. And I'm just going to, instead of going through it and actually making it from scratch, and possibly screwing up, <laughs> I'm just going to describe how this one already works. So, if we go into the data pack, you can see it has, it's just a folder with a custom dimension name. You can name it whatever you want. If we open that up, you can see inside we have a data and a pack.mc meta file. The data is actually just a folder. So, in pack.mc meta, you can see it's just a text file. It's a... It's just called it .mc meta file. Um, and inside it has some JSON filing. And we have pack, pack format, and the pack description here. These aren't super important. However, you do need this file for a data pack to be recognized by the game. Uh, especially pack format. Or sorry, just pack in general. Pack format tells the game what version the data pack structure is. Uh, for the most part, this isn't too important though because data packs don't really break in between versions. And description, there is no... UI in game for the most part except for when you're first creating a world where you can actually see this text so you can put whatever you want here. All right, so inside this data folder, you see we have the Minecraft name and we're going to go inside of here. So you need a folder called Minecraft. Inside of here, we have another folder, we have another two folders, excuse me. One is called dimension and one is called dimension type. In the dimension folder, you actually have the dimension names uh, and the dimension key value, which is the value, the name that goes, so it's Minecraft colon and then XYZ. Um, this would be inside of here, there's another folder with that name key. Um, same with dimension type, however, it only describes um, certain aspects of the world generation, um, like Piglin, Piglin Safe. Um, Actually, I don't have to remember off memory. It's all in the dimension page. Uh, the data pack page, which is how data packs are structured, as well as the dimension page, which is how dimensions are structured, the files themselves, will be linked in the description below. So I highly recommend taking a look at these pages. As you can see, the dimension type has stuff like ultra warm, which is when water behaves like it does in the nether, uh, shrunk, which is how nether portals work, which is why traveling in the nether is more efficient, uh, has skylight, has ceiling, that type of stuff is in dimension type syntax. Um, so we're going to go back and let's go into dimension first. So in the dimension folder, you can see that you have the name key for the dimension. Uh, this cannot be Minecraft, so it can't be Minecraft colon uh, dimension name here. Uh, it can't be Minecraft, so it needs to be custom dimension or custom or something like that. Whatever you guys want to name this obviously uh, for this example I just have it custom dimension and then so it'd be custom dimension colon dimension name and that's how you would teleport into this custom dimension in this dimension name JSON file if we go inside I can describe it real quick uh, you can see we have the type which is what we listed before uh, which is in the dimension type so it calls from that and we have the generator options which is the actual world itself as you can see we're making a flat world with layers of bedrock on the bottom, two layers of dirt, one layer of grass blocks, the biome is set to forest, and I just left structures blank just because it makes life super easy, because uh, I don't care. <laughs> and if we go now into dimension type, you can see there's that types folder right here. So that's the namespace. This can be Minecraft. The other one cannot. Um, this one can be Minecraft if you'd like, but if we go in here, we have a type for net types for now. You can see overworld, so this should actually be overworld. Um, this is because this has the default overworld settings, which like I said, are on this page. You can see this column right here. There's all the default settings. So I've copied those and put them into JSON format and into this file. And we can call that into this guy. So now we have a data pack, we have our custom dimension. We can also make more dimensions in here. So let's make a, uh, let's make a void world, so let's call it custom dimension colon void inside this file it's going to be overworld flat I'm just going to delete all the layers right because that's what a void world is is a super fat world with no no actual blocks right and I'm going to make it a default plains biome instead of a forest I just like the color of forests because the uh, the grass is a little bit greener we don't care about structures I'm just going to leave that blank and we're going to leave it as the default overworld settings so now I'm going to show you guys how to import the data pack into your world. All right, so now we have that the custom dimension data pack is complete and we have our custom dimensions created. We can go into the Minecraft menu 
go into single player and we can go to create a new world. I didn't mention this before, but this can only be used when creating a new world unless you want to do some fancy file moving and doing stuff manually. Uh, this will only work in new worlds. So what you want to do is create a new world, set all your settings. I'm going to just set it to creative. That's the only thing I want to do. I'm going to go into the data packs new tab that's in 1.16 and I'm just going to drag this folder directly into my data pack available section. Do you want to add this? Yes. And then you have to move it from the available to the actually selected section. Click done. After that, if you go back, it should still be there. If everything's all set, if you go into your Minecraft logs, which you can do. So if you close the game completely, I will show you guys how to open the logs. If we go into the Minecraft launcher, go into settings in the bottom left here. You can see there's an option for open output log when game starts. That is very useful for checking for errors. So I'm just going to leave that checked and I will launch the game again. Give me just a moment. You can see the output log came up on my second monitor. I'm just going to move this down here in the corner. I'm going to wait for the game to open up. All right, now that we're back and the video has stopped stuttering because the game was loading, uh, we can go into create the new world again, just like before. Uh, set to enable, set all our settings for the actual default world. We're going to go normal. You can still do all this stuff. This stuff hasn't changed. Um, and then when we go to create new world, before we do anything else, it will say using experimental features. Do you want to use them? Uh, before you click this, double check your output log and make sure there are no, um, you'll see warns. So there'll be orange these are okay uh, but if you see red ones um, it might be Warner errors I can't remember but if they turn red any red text in here that's no good that means there's an error and you want to read that and figure out what's wrong with the actual uh, dimension file but we don't see any red things over here so I don't need that anymore the dimension types both of them look good so now we can click proceed and it's going to generate the world All right, the world is generated a little bit. Let my encoder to actually catch up again. Uh, now what we can do is actually go into the two dimensions that we added because we added two. We had, we made that custom one. So if we go execute, if we go to execute in, so this defines what dimension we go into. And you can see now we have custom dimension dimension name, which is the example I used at the very beginning, and custom dimension void, which is the one we created on video with no blocks as a super flat. So we're going to go and custom dimension name and it should be just a regular super flat and now what we're going to want to do is run teleport myself which is at s in the same locations that i'm currently standing or i can do one zero one hundred zero whatever you want and that will teleport us into the dimension it might lag for just a second uh, there's currently a bug in the game where the sky turns black and it thinks it's the overworld so the sky turns black when you go below sea level um, that is currently a bug. I will also link in the description below, uh, but that's why I would recommend either changing the dirt height to something so that you're, you know, you can see we're high enough now and the sky is turned blue again. Uh, we can also use the same command to go into the other world. Thanks, cross out. Uh, we can go into void, and you can see, you can see my Y level decreasing to zero, and there are no blocks below me, and now we are in the void, and if I keep falling, I will eventually die. And there's no blocks in this world at all. And like I said before, let me go back into that dimension while I'm still flying. Oops, there we go. And you can see the biome is still planes biome. So yeah, that's about it. Um, if you want to go into depth on how all this works, you have to look through it, especially the overworld generation settings. They're not as much you can't change as much as the 1.12 versions, but there's still a lot you can customize in here. Um, I haven't gone. I haven't even gone through all this stuff, the regular overworld stuff, uh, and it's very confusing to me, especially trying to figure it out with basically no help. So, yeah, that's about it for me today, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Maybe consider subscribing. Join my Discord. And come say hi. And that's about it, guys. I'll see you. Bye. Yo, what's going on guys, Energy Games, welcome back to another video. We, today, are making 
Not making it. I'm gonna show you how to do something. Uh, on my... Yo, what's going on, guys? Yeah. Yo, what's going on, guys? Dream Games. Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna get, show you. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you and show you. Yep. Excuse me, Mr. B. I'm trying to record a video. You need not, but thank you. Yo, what's going on, guys? Dream Games. Welcome back to. <laughs> I shouldn't have eaten right before doing this. Dang it. What's going on, guys? <coughs> Goodness. Why is with me today? What's going on, guys? Random G Games. Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to put custom worlds in... Custom worlds. Custom dimensions. What am I talking about? So, without further ado, I'm going to show you guys how to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it. How to do it. I can speak and pronunciate. Not really. What's going on guys, Random Shoe Games, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to make custom dimensions. And... What am I saying? Alright, now that we're on my desktop, you can see I actually already have a data pack over here. And I'm just going to open it up and describe how it works. So inside the data pack, uh, it opened over there. What the... <laughs> 